Terere Siti Rio Dororoko Yarabaki, Irio do Terere Kea Rabasu to Yarabasho, Etea Karamandu Dia de Siki Arasho, Erada Kayarabasiti Yarosho to Yarabasho, Orada Kiamando de Kea Rabasiti Arasho, Ere de Akayanama City Odo Koye de Bekia da Kaye. Oh Lord, we fix our eyes onto the hills. Where does our help come? from our help comes from the lord the creator of heaven and the earth he's the one we've come to worship he's the one we've come to behold he's the one we've come to extol he's the one we've come to glorify his name is elohim his name is adonai his name is jehovah his name is jesus his name is jesus his name is jesus oh just begin to lift up and magnify the lord with me oh we've come for one reason we've come for one reason oh and that's to exalt the king of kings and the lord of lords the great i am oh he is the i am oh he's the god of abraham isaac and jacob oh he is the one the best the beginning and is the end he's the first and he is the last oh father you are Oh, Father, we long for only you. Oh, we long for you. We chase after you. Oh, can you just begin to lift up your voice? Oh, lift up your voice. Lift up your sound. Lift up your desperation. Lift up your hunger. Oh, lift up your thirst. Oh, lift up a cry. Oh, he hears the cry of the righteous. Oh, he hears the cry of the righteous. Oh, Lord, we turn our face to you. Oh, we turn our face to you. Oh, we seek your face, mighty God. We seek your face, almighty one. Oh, eternal one, anointed one, a holy one, oh, sovereign one. Oh, we fix our eyes on the King of kings. We fix our eyes on the King of glory. Oh, King of glory, have your glory in this place. Oh, King of glory, have your glory in this place. Oh, less of us, mighty God, and more of you. Less of us and more Less of us and more of you. Less of us and more of you. Oh, more of you. Pour out your spirit of fresh in this place, God. Pour out your spirit of fresh, mighty God. Oh, run the heavens. Run the heavens. Run the heavens, mighty God. Run the heavens, mighty God. Oh, Father, break open. Break open the heavens. Break open the heavens. Break open the heavens. Break open the heavens. Lord, I pray that as we go out through this day, Lord God, that as we decree and declare out through this service, Lord God, that people will be healed in the name of Jesus. Lord, I say that the devil can't have this, this church's generation, Lord God. The devil can't have this church's generation because he is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. And Lord, I pray that as we leave this service that when we leave lord god that everybody will be marked in the name of jesus everybody will be marked lord jesus oh lord we thank you here for bringing us tonight oh lord we thank you for families oh lord we thank you for bringing us here to this church oh lord we thank you for the world changes ministry oh lord we thank you to bring us the prayer and unity that has one voice oh lord for we decree that you are not a god of confusion but peace in all the churches and all the saints oh lord i pray that we are a court of three straps and we will not be broken easily oh lord the satan has no power oh god has power because he is wonderful mighty triumphant oh lord i play song 6 68 1 oh lord now god arise God arise, and God arise, and his enemies be scattered, and those who hate him flee before him alone. Oh, King of Glory, break in. King of Glory, break in. King of Glory, break in and have your glory. Lord, we worship you and we lift up the name above all names. We lift up the name of Jesus. We lift up the only name that can heal. We lift up the only name that can save. We lift up the only name that can set free. The only name that can redeem. Oh, Lord, you are mighty, you are sovereign, you are holy, you are righteous, Lord, you are an advocate.
advocate, the almighty God, the great I am, King of kings and Lord of lords, Lion of the tribe of Judah, oh, Lion of the tribe of Judah, wants to roar in the Sabbath spirit tonight, Lion of the tribe of Judah, wants to roar, oh, Come! 
We came to meet with you tonight, God. We came to meet with you. And we refuse to leave this place until we do. Oh!
Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is Out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of His love. Come on, that's it. Oh, the Spirit is here. Let there be freedom. Let there be freedom. Come on, somebody magnify Him. Somebody magnify him. Somebody magnify him. Somebody praise the chain breaker in this place. Lift your voice. Up. Lift your voice. Come on, enthrone him. Enthrone him.
a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. I can't stand the name.
this room tonight. Somebody lift your cry in this room tonight. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Although every heart and every mind. Within your presence, I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. To every dark addiction starts to bring it. To clearing there is hope and there is freedom. Jesus. Come on. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every strong Shine through the shadow.
Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets. Shout Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Say, shout Jesus for I speak. It's a holy name. Come on, come on. Oh, sing it again like that. Shout Jesus from the mountains. And Jesus in the streets, ha. shout Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Hey. Shout Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name of Jesus. Oh. Shout Jesus for. There's a song that says, let all the other names fade away. Let all the other names fade away until there's only you. Let all the other names fade away. We say, Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. It's a simple song saying, let all the names fade away till there's only you let all the other names fade away Jesus take your place Jesus take your place Jesus take your place come on can you lift your hands sing it out say it let all the other names fade away
Jesus of the daughters, Jesus of the prodigals, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we speak the name of Jesus over every difficult circumstance. We speak the name of Jesus over every broken relationship. We speak the name of Jesus over every prodigal. In the name of Jesus, we speak the name of Jesus and we decree household salvation. Household salvation. Household salvation. Household salvation. Lift your cry and put your faith on it tonight. That's it, that's it, that's it. Come on, come on, come on. Take your body and get it back here. Don't let me kiss you. Come on, throw your hands up. Throw your hands up. There's a spirit. There's a spirit of faith and intercession in the room tonight. Call them home. Speak Jesus over your family. Wholeness, Lord. Come on, if you have an unsafe family member, I want you to lift your hands. I want you to begin to call their name out and speak Jesus over their life. Come on, let there be a roar in this place. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Let tonight be a shifting, oh God. Let tonight be a turning, oh God. Oh, let their heart turn tonight, God. Let their heart turn tonight, God. Come on, call their name. Speak Jesus. That's it, that's it. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, speak their name. And then speak his name. Speak their name and then speak his name. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Come on, God is doing something right now. God is doing something. It's your intercession right now. It's your declaration. Do it, Jesus. Let tonight be a shifting moment. Let tonight be a turning moment for family, Scott. Let tonight, oh God. the moment, oh Lord, when your spirit touches their heart 
in the name of Jesus. Change them, Lord. Change them, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Come on, I'm giving you a little bit of time here. This is the water is stirred tonight. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Yamana Niondo da Bacata. Here the Bacata da Damanda. Here the Bocota da Bacata. Here the Badana Nianda da Damanda. Here the Nomondo Yete Kishikiti. Rebe Bebe Kishikiti. Hala da Mandianda da Damanda. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let it be so, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, every captive set free. We put our faith tonight, oh God, that every family member will be serving Jesus, will be worshiping Jesus. We thank you that they will be baptized in the Holy Ghost and with fire. Hallelujah. Let it be so, Lord. Let it be so. Hallelujah. Jesus, 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 Jesus. So I'm just going to do this right now. Everybody lift your hands. If you can stand, you're physically able. Please do so right now. There's things that need to be mended in your families, relationships that need to be restored between parent or child or sibling. Let's believe for it right now, amen. Come on, lift your hands, pray in the Holy Spirit. Father, we pray that broken relationships be mended tonight, God, in families. Come on, come on, cry out for it tonight. Lord, I pray. Hold up, Akacha. Turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, Lord God. To the hearts of the fathers to the children, oh God. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, every relationship be restored, every marriage be restored, every broken, severed, fragmented relationship between child and parent, let it be healed in the name of Jesus. Between siblings, let it be healed. Come on, I don't care how old you are. If there's a broken relationship, let it be healed in Jesus. Come on, I need you to cry out. If God is gonna have to, if God is gonna have a strong church, He's gonna have some strong families. Remind the devil in the name of Jesus from breaking up and severing the families in Jesus' name. God, let there be healing released tonight. Come on, 30 seconds, lift your hands and cry out. Come on, come on, come on. Tonight be a miracle night. Let tonight be a miracle night. Let tonight be a miracle night. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Healing, Lord. Healing, Lord. Healing, Lord. Healing, Lord. Let it be complete tonight, God. Restoration, redemption, God. Restore back the years that the enemy has stolen, oh God. Restore them, Jesus. Restore them to the families, God. In the name of Jesus, I speak fullness. I speak joy. I speak healing. I speak completion. In the name of Jesus, give it praise. Give it praise. We say yes. Ricky, I want to pray for you and your family. Don't mean to embarrass you guys, but it's help me out. It's your dad. It's your brother. And, and, and your 
his wife, your dad, amen, and Ricky. So, I, yeah, so, uh, Ron, yeah, you guys just go, Tony, go lay hands on them right now. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. Ricky's been facing some health issues. We're going to believe right now, right now, healing and restoration in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for this amazing family, God. Tony, go ahead and pray over them. Go ahead and just release a prayer over them. Yes, Lord. God, I thank you. Touch them tonight, God. Minister to them. Oh, Lord God, let them feel your presence tonight, God. Let them feel your presence. Let them feel your joy. Let them feel your peace tonight, God. In the name of Jesus, Ricky, I speak complete healing in your body. I speak right now deliverance from this attack in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, pray in the spirit. Oh, yeah. Oh, restoration, restoration. Thank you, Lord, for touching them by your spirit. Oh, complete freedom tonight, God. Minister to them, Lord God. Let them feel your presence and your glory. Let them feel your presence and your glory, 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 your glory. Oh, your glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, let the power of God, come on, let it rise in here. Let it rise. Let the prayer rise. Hallelujah. Touch the Lord. Touch the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, for believers across this nation and families across this nation in your church, Lord, that there be a fresh zeal for you. Come on, can you pray with me for just 30 more seconds? That there be a fresh zeal for you and a fresh zeal for your house. Come on, come on. Lord God, I pray from young to old, God, stir the zeal and the passion for you and for your house, God. I come against distractions, God. I come against idols, God. I come against those things that the enemy would place in our paths to keep us from pursuing you, God. I pray for a fresh passion and a fresh zeal for you and for your house, God. In Jesus' name, let it be so, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and give him a praise one more time in this place tonight. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Household salvation. Amen. Can we put our faith on it? Can we say it's happening in Jesus' name? All right, we're going to do this, and then we're going to still going to turn the service. We're going to call them home. Amen. Are you ready? On the count of three, you scream their name and you call them home to the Father. Amen. One, two, three. Call them home. Come on. Call them home. Call them home to the Father. Come 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 home to the Father. In the name of Jesus, come home to the Father. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come home to the Father. Come home to the Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's working. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. Let it be so, God. Turn and greet someone as you go find your seat tonight. Come on. Hallelujah.
love on one another. Speak faith to one another right now. It's happening, it's happening, it's happening. Jesus from the mountain. It's happening, it's happening, it's happening. Shout Jesus from the mountain. Jesus in the streets. Shout Jesus in the dark. So you for your power that is manifested in this worship time together and we thank you that your name is real and active and working over our families in Jesus name amen amen hallelujah thank you all for being here tonight do you feel the presence of the Lord he's not done yet tell your neighbor he's not done yet no no scream it at him he is not done yet he has only just begun. Amen. We're thankful that you came here back tonight. We, God has blessed us so much this weekend. So much to say. I'm not going to take time with the recap right now. But Friday night, Saturday night, this morning. Come on. Let's give Jesus praise for what he's done in the atmosphere through our prayers and in lives. And we're gonna have water baptisms tonight at the end of the service. If you're here and you wanna be water baptized, we have clothes for you to change into. Uh, Evangelist Tony will give instructions at the end of the service whenever the Holy Spirit is finished. And so we encourage you, be water baptized tonight, amen? So that's gonna happen. And if you say, oh, you know, about clothes and all that, we have clothes for you to, to change into, no worries on that. Um, but it's gonna be powerful, amen? It's offering time right now, yes. While you're getting your offerings ready, don't forget to go by and get the product from uh, Evangelist Tony's table out in the foyer. Buy up everything that he has out there, amen. It'll bless him, it'll bless you too. Let's lift our hands as we, as we worship one more time tonight in our giving. Everybody give something tonight, amen. How many know he's a faithful God, yes? How many know it's important that we give? Come on, come on. How many know it's important that we give? that we give it's very important that we give this is god's way he's a blessing god he's faithful every time every single time how I many know his word is truth he means what he says amen he will bless but that's not the only reason why we give we give because we love him we give because we believe in revival come on we give because we want a nation come on to reverberate with the sound of revival amen so father in the name of jesus we lift a joyful heart tonight a cheerful heart we give, Lord, out of worship to you. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for us. You are a faithful God. So tonight we plant these seeds into your kingdom. And we pray, God, every need be met in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Let's worship. Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets. Shout Jesus in the darkness over every enemy shout jesus for my family i speak the holy name of jesus
shout his name in this place. Jesus! Well, I know if you were here this morning, you were blessed by the word of the Lord. And we're thankful that Evangelist Tony Suarez is back in the house tonight, looking forward to what God has put in his heart to share with us. I want you to stretch your hand out, would you please? Once again, Lord, we thank you for the man of God. We thank you, Lord, for what he carries. We thank you, Lord, for the relationship that he has with this house. And tonight, God, we pray the word of the Lord in his spirit would begin to rise up and be loosed in this place. And we thank you for it, Father. We thank you for deeper revelation. We thank you for grace. We thank you, Lord, for a work of the Holy Spirit in this place tonight that you will have ears to hear, minds to think, hearts to understand, Lord. And we thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. And the church said... Amen. Amen. Put your hands together and welcome Evangelist Tony Suarez. Amen. Tonight after or during the altar call at some point, we're going to release those that have, that are desiring to be water baptized. I'm going to go fishing real fast. It was, I've, I don't know, 13 that raised their hands at the beginning of the service. If you're in here and you feel that pull from the Spirit on you, then when we make that call, I want you to answer that call as well. There's a lot to do and little time to do it tonight. I want to pray for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, the baptism of the Spirit. If you've never been baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of tongues, tonight is your night. Tonight is your night. Confess it, decree it, believe it. Tonight's my night. Tonight's the night I'm going to pray through. And if you have it, but you're half empty, tonight's the night to fill the tank. Amen. There's a special anointing. I feel it in this house so strongly tonight. Pastor Abe. Did a lot of people come from Jersey with you today? The whole line? The whole row? Praise the Lord. I want to pray for New Jersey before, before we're out of here. Because you got to take something home with you and put it on others. Amen. Whew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Two years ago, the Lord gave me a word over California. Because there's an old prophecy that Los Angeles was going to be pulled off into the ocean and that sharks would swim in the streets of Los Angeles but the, but the word of the Lord was just like in the days of Jonah I've heard the cry of the people and I'm sparing Los Angeles and rather than see sharks in the street they'll see angels in the street and there is revival in Los Angeles again But over on the other coast, in the east coast, there are many that have given New England over to the enemy. And they have said New York and New Jersey and Massachusetts is a lost cause. But I say no, for there's a remnant that stands in the gap. And I say New Jersey will not be known for corruption. New Jersey will not be known for its ties to anything but Holy Ghost revival. And I say, Leah, come out of your church. Let it come out of this ministry. Let it be known that the church of the living God is alive and well in New Jersey in the mighty name of Almighty God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Whew. Hallelujah. Sometimes when the Spirit's flowing, you just don't know which way to go. So rather than force it, you just kind of step up take a step back and you just kind of feel for where the river's taking you. Hallelujah. 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 If you are believing, don't raise your hand on it because it's personal, but if you've been believing for miracle babies, Father, I felt it. 
I say, Lay it, let it come to pass in the name of Jesus. May there be miracle, revival, baby showers. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. In 2024. Let there be some expectant parents that get an, some awesome Christmas presents come 2024. I call miracle babies into existence in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God, hallelujah. Well, I'm going to release this word. I want to go to the book of Matthew chapter 11. And read one verse out of there, verse 12. I'm reading from the King James Version for this scripture. Hallelujah. And then I'm going to jump to 2 Timothy. Thank you for having me back. I honor this house. I value this house. I respect this house. I don't take it lightly to come here. This is a very special platform, very special pulpit that has touched the world. And uh, I thank God for you. And I thank your pastors for trusting me behind this pulpit. They don't let uh, and just anyone come. And I, I, just, I just don't take it, I just don't take it lightly. Amen. And so I thank you very much for the opportunity and, and the privilege. Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 11, verse 12, I'm sure you've never read this verse in this church. I'm sure, like, this is like fresh manna. Like, <laughs> and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. And then the other scripture I want to go to is 2 Timothy chapter 1 verses 5 through 9 and it says this is Paul speaking to his son in the gospel it says uh, reading from the New Living Translation I remember your genuine faith for you share the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois <clears throat> and your mother Eunice and I know that same faith continues strong in you this is why I remind you to fan into flames the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid my hands on you. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline, or another translation says, and a sound mind. New Living Translation says, fan the spirit, fan into flames. Another translation says, stir up the gift that is on the inside of you. And I want to preach from this subject, which I believe is a prophetic word. The title is the prophetic word the Lord gave me three weeks ago. And it's simply this, from revival to revolution. And I want to try to unpack this. I'm going to forewarn you, give you the disclaimer. I don't have all the notes I would normally have for a sermon, which is probably good, which means we're going to get out of here sooner tonight. My wife didn't say amen on that, but I'm just telling you, be a little quicker than this morning. But I want to release this prophetic word to you and just unpack it together for what I believe that God is going to do in this year. Amen. Father, I thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to be here. Use me for your glory. Speak your word through me. And I ask that it would be confirmed with a mighty moving of your spirit in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. would you help me praise him one more time? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Not too long ago, I saw a video that I hadn't seen since 2020 of the first tent revival that we held in the middle of the pandemic in Nashville. During that season, uh, when, if you, if you can remember, and I, I think you can because we still talk about it as if it was last month, but we, our world was in chaos our tomorrow was completely uncertain, and we didn't know what to do in that moment. And I remember when we called for a tent revival in Nashville, we genuinely did not know if anyone would show up. 
And I remember driving onto the parking lot of Nissan Stadium with Gina and the kids, and we drove into a parking lot that was virtu- into a tent that was virtually f- filled hours before the service began. And I remember looking into the tent, and I didn't recognize anyone. It was just people that had come from afar off, and we had every flavor of Christianity in that tent. Um, if you're familiar with Baskin Robbins ice cream, it was like Pentecost. Well, it was like Christian Baskin Robbins in there. You had Pentecostals and Presbyterians, you had Apostolics, and you had Methodists. We had Wesleyans, and we had Catholics, and we had Charismatics, and we had non-denominational. Just everybody came because people were hungry because so many houses of worship were closed and in that spirit of revival uh, worship was beautiful worship was genuine people sang together worship together we sang old songs new songs it was just a beautiful spirit and I was watching the video reminiscing of what God did three years ago in that tent and it brought to memory a prophetic word that the Lord gave in those days where he said the American church is about to see that the fire never died. We just needed to fan the flames a little bit. And what we've seen from the pandemic till now is that, in my opinion, the American church is coming back to life. The American church is back in revival. People got stirred up. People got unsatisfied. People got hungry and thirsty, and they were no longer willing to just sit idly by and accept the status quo or the doomsday prophecies or or tyrannical government mandates. We something happened to us, and to the glory of God, we woke up. And maybe it took a virus to stir us up and a little racial injustice and a little political turmoil and maybe a little fighting amongst each other. Maybe it took a little drama, but thanks be to God that we have woken up. Hallelujah. I want to be careful with what I just said i'm not excusing anything that was wrong that took place I'm, I'm not i'm not saying it's good that it took place but what i'm saying is it's good that we woke up it's good that we're still not in the same place fighting the same fights doing the same things it's good that the church woke up and we're not dormant the way we were and we have seen a resurgence of the move of the holy ghost we've seen a resurgence of signs miracles and wonders We're seeing the power of God manifest in our services. I come to you tonight as an evangelist, if you will, a quasi-missionary that travels from coast to coast, north, south, east, and west. And my assignment is to go and preach revival to churches. And there are some churches I get to go to to, that, that are like Fresh Start that are already in a move of God and then there's other places I have to go where my assignment is to help stir up the gift that's on the inside of those churches but I want to report to you you remember when the missionaries used to come back from the mission field and they would put the slide presentation and they'd give you a report well I'm here as a missionary of the Lord to report to you that I have been from the north the south the east and the west and revival has come back to the United States there is an estate that's not being touched by the fire of God there's not a county that's not being touched by the fire of God. Revival is breaking out. People are being baptized in the Holy Ghost. People are being water baptized. We're seeing signs and miracles and wonders. And Pentecost is no longer on a comeback. Pentecost is back, ladies and gentlemen. It is the spirit of Pentecost, the power of Pentecost, It is back. That's what revival is about. It's the message of Paul to Timothy that says, I thank God for what you know. I thank God for your legacy. But Timothy, you make sure that you keep that fire alive. You keep, you make sure that you keep stirring up the gift. You make sure that you keep fanning the flame of that of that legacy of the move of God, of what you know to be true. You keep it alive for another generation. Now we have come out of three decades, three, 30 years of a demon called seeker-sensitive church, a spirit 
of religion that masqueraded itself as church growth and as outreach and as a soul winning program but what it did was quench the gifts of the spirit it quenched the moving of the Lord speaking in other tongues it quenched everything that was Pentecost because when the enemy can no longer use the things of the world, he will use religion. He will use things masqueraded as spirituality to quench the fire. Hallelujah. And we saw it. We saw it take hold. And there were many that were frustrated. Many that wouldn't give up. Many that wouldn't go along with what was taking place over the last 30 years. But I'm, I'm just going to be putting it out. I had, I had contemporaries, peers who I love that prayed through in the same altars I prayed through. They went to the same youth camps that I went to. They know the same fire I know, but they were swept away by fads. They were swept away by strategies, and they ended up in a place that they probably never intended to be. But I have also seen with my very own eyes in these last few years, many of these sons of Pentecost coming back home because they know too much. The faith that was in their grandmother Lois, the faith that was in their mother Eunice is overwhelming them in these days and they're recognizing that the hope of America is in the fire of revival the power of Pentecost and the power that we know to be true hallelujah so we contend for revival it was behind this pulpit that the Lord gave a word to you to me together in 2021 where he said, I no longer want revival chasers, but I need revival makers. I went home and rebranded everything because I felt like I found my identity in that moment. It is my life's calling to stir up revival and to raise up revival makers that are no longer satisfied with what God does here and there, but they say if he can do it there, then he can do it here. If he can use him and he can use her, then he can use me. That, that's what revival is all about. Revival is about stirring up it's resurrecting, breathing alive, and then keeping alive the moving of God. That's why we need revival. We need revival to stir up, to resurrect, to breathe alive, and to keep alive the moving of God. Because when you let the fire die, let me talk to all the grill masters in the room. When you let the fire die, you can no longer cook on the grill. And it can look hot. And it can look like something productive. But if there's no fire, there's no heat. And if there's no heat, you can't cook. And there's been 30 years of what looked like fire. It looked good, but you couldn't cook on it. But we're here to fan that flame, keep the fire alive so that demons will have to flee. Sicknesses will be healed and souls will be saved. It's not that we're, when I said from revival to revolution, it's not that we're leaving revival, it's what revival must produce. So you gotta fan the flame and receive the new thing. If you don't keep the revival alive, for, just in case, just in case there's someone here that's tired, said, look, I've been in this thing for nine years with them. Can we get a break? No. No. Because if you take a break, the fire is going to be quenched. And if the fire is quenched, we're not going to be able to cook anything spiritual on this thing. Do you hear me? You have to pray like you've never prayed before. You got to praise like you've never praised before. Because your family got bigger, there's more souls in the kingdom, and so it's going to require, I, I, I hope that's not bad news, but you don't get to do less, you're going to have to do more than you've ever done before. <laughs> Revival requires it. Because when you don't, you know, I, I love to grill. 
And I, one day I was out there grilling and that Gene and the kids got me this new grill for Father's Day and I was still learning to use it and the first time I used it, I burnt the steak. <laughs> the next time I did it, the steak was raw. I know some of y'all like it that way, but I'm saying it was like rawer than raw. It was, so, the fire was so cold. How cold was it? It was so cold, a fly came down and just landed on the grill. <laughs> True story. Because I didn't know how to manage the heat yet. I was still learning how to give it ventilation and so that the fire could stay alive. What happens is if you don't keep the fire alive, false doctrine will just kind of fly in and make itself comfortable in the house of God. If you don't keep the fire of God alive, worldliness will just kind of fly in and just park itself in the house of God and you don't have enough fire to expel it. If you don't keep fire, if you don't keep the fire alive, then stagnation will come into this place. It'll become so stagnant that we'll have to throw out all of the wood, all of the charcoal, and start all over again to produce a new fire. What's the other option? We're just going to keep fanning that flame a little bit and say we're not going to let that thing die. It's cost us too much time, too much prayer, too much fasting, too many sacrifices, too much money. It's cost us too much. We've lost, we've gained, but we're not giving up because we, we, we know the value of the fire. You have to keep the fire alive. If you let the fire of revival die, religion masquerading as routine will come in and say, this is how we've always done it. And this is how you must always do it because the fire has died. Therefore, we keep, that, that's why you have all those prayer meetings. That's why you have those kids that are praying up here because that's the other thing about revival. Revival will produce another generation. Hallelujah. I love coming to Fresh Start and seeing the same people but then seeing the new people that are being tapped and tagged in and saying now you come pray for me that lets me know the fire is still alive that lets me know that there's new wood in the fire that is keeping this fire and keeping this thing alive. Revival protects and preserves the church as well. It protects and preserves doctrine, holiness, and necessary customs and practices. It protects the future of the church. And revival does something else very important. Revival brings unity, blessings, and miracles. If you can remember back to 2020, you want to hear something wild? I had no clue who Fresh Start was. And you had no clue who Tony was. And I had no clue about New Jersey. And I didn't know about our friends in East Texas. And I didn't know Jay Hazlip in Los Angeles. And I didn't know this one. And I didn't know that one. But when revival stirred up during the pandemic, all of a sudden unity came. We started meeting one another. The remnant started meeting up. And not by happen chance, but by the leading of the Holy Ghost. God started connecting this fire with this fire and that fire with that fire. And now we sit in this house today. New Jersey. Jersey and Tennessee and Phoenix and Texas and wherever else you've come from because revival will bring necessary unity to the body of Christ but remember when I said that if that fire dies down some the kookiness will come into the church hallelujah I'm just gonna call it what it is there's some crazy happening in the church not here because you got pastors that protect this thing. Say, nope, not in this house. You do you, boo, over there. But over here, we don't do that. And you ought to thank God that you got people that will protect the fire. And they'll keep it pure. And they'll keep it holy. And they'll keep it uncontaminated by the world and religion. You ought to thank God you got leadership that will keep the sensationalism out of the supernatural. But revival has to produce results. Sometimes we confuse revival with the manifestation. 
or, or the, 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 the thing that we get in the service. We, we, we think that revival is just the touch, the jump, the shout, the falling out, the laughing, the, the ooh, man, I got, what's the, I, I got, I got, what's the word they use? I got um, zapped. What's slammed? Slain. Yeah, slain, but there's another one. I got, they, uh, there's another word. It sounds like I, I, wrecked. I got wrecked. I got, I got this. I got that. And I love all of that. I don't, I don't have to give my disclaimer. I love it all. I want it all. I'm open to everything that God, that God wants to do to me. But revival isn't just about me getting a touch. It's not just about me coming out saying, whoo, wooey, I got drunk tonight. I like to get drunk in the Holy Ghost. But that isn't the end all of revival. And so here's my conviction and here's where God was taking me. And I want to be careful in how I say this. But, but the, the, the Lord said, the Lord said, are, 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 are new people getting set free or is it just the same people getting set free from the same thing week after week after week? Now, I'm going to pray for you till you break through. But I want to help you understand today that revival is not just baptizing the same people that I baptized last month, praying through the same people that I prayed through last month. Revival has to produce souls. There needs to be new sinners in the altar that are praying through to the baptism of the Holy Ghost. What I'm trying to tell you is it's not, it's not about getting baptized every week. It's about getting your breakthrough once and for all so that you can set another generation free by the power of God if we're not careful we will become selfish with revival and it will become all about me I need to go to revival so I can get my touch but who will touch the world We can't hog the fire. We can't hog the blessing. We can't just keep it to ourselves in this room. Not when there's a world going to hell. Not when there's a world that doesn't know the fire. Early this morning, early this morning, I heard the Lord speaking to me about this issue. And he said, every time, every time that, re that revelation comes to the church, every time that I send revelation to the church, they turn into a religious recluse. They will take revelation and they will just keep it to themselves and go take it and hide it in the corner as if that's the only thing I'm doing. Hence, denomination. So you got one that gets a revelation of prosperity and says that's the whole message I'm just going to go over here with my money you got another one that gets the revelation of the name of Jesus and says that's it I'm going to keep it over here you get another one that gets the revelation of the prophetic I'm going to keep that here we can't become a recluse in this society you can't just take revelation and keep it to yourself and say well I'm just trying to protect it you don't have to protect the revelation of God he's mighty all by himself you got to spread the revelation. You got to spread the revival. You need to let everyone know about the power of the name of Jesus. You got to let everyone know the blessing that belongs to the kingdom. So I heard the spirit say to me, he said, tell the church that in this season, I will take them from revival to revolution. Hallelujah. He said, you've heard long enough in revival meetings of what should be, what we should be doing. He said, tell them it's time to apply the concept. We're telling everyone what you should do and how you should do it and what it should look. It's time to take it and actually do it. And I heard, this is what the Lord told me. He said, stop saying in your sermons, I wonder what would happen. Dot, dot, dot. That's a good old Pentecostal way to preach. Huh? I wonder what would happen if about 25 of you right now would just start shouting. He said, stop saying that. 
Stop saying, I wonder what will happen and do it and make it happen. Stop wondering and put it into practice. He said, start doing it. Start having the prayer meetings. Start having uninhibited praise. Start doing the things that you've been taught and watch as I turn this revival into a revolution. He said, if they'll do it, I'll make it happen. And the spirit of the Lord said, it is time for a revolution. It will take violent believers to bring it to pass, but it is time for a revolution. I said, Lord, help me understand because I want to make sure that I deliver this word and that I understand. He said, it is time to not have revival in concept only, but to see the change in the culture and in the nation. For every great move of God did not just touch the church. It touched the world. It touched the government. It touched the economy. It touched the society. And God said, I'll do it again. He said, I need violent believers that will rise up in force and they will not sit out another election or let another one be stolen. It's time for a revolution. It's time for believers that understand. We used to tell people, well, just, you know, keep your religion out of the dining room. Just don't talk about it. No, you better talk about it. You better let your children know what you believe. Your grandchildren better know where you stand. That's how we got to where we are right now tell it to your daughters tell it to your sons you got to let people know what you believe we need a revolution of violent believers that will not let the foster care and adoption system be overtaken I'm gonna call it out by the LGBT demographic of perversion I'm gonna call it out right now I read the article last week, I think it was on CNN, that said that they are on, they are moving forward with their agenda. They are doing what they can to stop evangelicals from being able to adopt and to be in the foster care because we're the fanatics and we are the radicals. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for a revolution. We're not going to give over these wayward children, these orphan children over to a spirit of perversion that's simply trying to create their own den of sin I rebuke it in the name of Jesus and I say revival has to lead to a revolution we need violent believers that are going to do more than simply complain about our education system but we must finally bring change to it you better know what they're teaching your children in history class you better know what's happening in science class it's time for a revolution i respect authority but i'm not going to let a principal i'm not going to let a school board raise my children god didn't give them to the system god gave them to me we need a revolution we need a violent revolution of believers that will not allow con men and con women that are sensationalists that specialize in a superficial kind of religion to poison the well of the supernatural and bring their counterfeit revival into the church we need a revolution of real revival believers that have a discernment of spirit and when a false prophet rises up will say nope that's not of God it sounds like a form of godliness but it denies the power thereof we need a revolution that will cleanse the church of not only false religion but of false prophets that are after your money they're after your money they're not after your soul god doesn't charge you for salvation he paid it all we need a revolution of violent believers that will take the focus off the devil and put it back on God if I be lifted up saith the Lord I will draw all men unto me we need a revolution of violent believers that are not going to wait for the next move of God but they will become the move of God it's time for a revolution and I felt the spirit tell me it's three weeks ago maybe when I was in Jersey he said I want you to start studying the revolutionary war start studying 
what I did in those days. Start studying the history, the strategies, and learn from it. A war that we put all the focus on July 4th, 1776, but a war that actually had started in 1775 from people that finally said enough is enough. Their main complaint was taxation without representation. In other words, a government that was out of touch. An oppressive government and regime that was placing an undue burden on them, but they weren't there to really know what they needed. And people were complaining in private, and they were complaining one to another. But a, a man named Paul Revere and some others started getting stirred up, and they started alerting and letting people know the British are coming. The British are coming. I believe that prior to 2020, there was a spirit of Paul Revere within the body of Christ. You were hearing some of those prophets that were saying, hey, this is coming and that is coming. An LGBT agenda is coming and this is coming and that is coming. And some of us scoffed at it and we said, never. Look how quickly it came. It came, if you would have told me in 2010 what was going to be happening in 2023, I would have said you're a conspiracy theorist. You wear tin hats and you probably live in a forest. Now I think you're the wisest man or woman on earth. If you would have told me in 2015 what was going to happen in a few short years, I would have said you're crazy. You're one of, you, you just like to stir up fear. You're a fear monger. And now I think you're a prophet. But there was Paul Revere's that were warning us saying, the British are coming. Worldliness is coming. Perversion is coming. Tyrannical governments are coming. Oppressive regimes are coming. This is coming and that is coming. And I believe that 2020 was our 1776 Declaration of Independence. I believe that 2020 is when we woke up and we said, enough is enough. It's, it, it's then that we said we will not be given over to heathen agendas, religious routines, tyranny, and worldliness. We must have revival. Now, I know some of you were contending for it before, but I'm saying collectively as a church, that's when we declared our independence and we started to see some things shift. I really believe that things started to shift for our good in 2020. I see it, but what I didn't understand fully about the Revolutionary War is that it started in 1775, but it took until the end of 1783 for us to finally declare that the war was over and that we were free once and for all in our own nation. It took eight years of fighting, eight years of contending, eight, eight years of keeping passion alive, eight years of encouraging the soldiers, eight years of pressing forward, eight years of when there was death and there was gloom and there was sickness and there was strife, but you had to get back up and say, but I'm going back to the battlefield. Eight years of saying, I'm going to do this. I'm going to keep fighting the fight. I believe in the cause. I believe in freedom. I believe in independence. And this is what I heard the Lord say when he said the church must go from revival to revolution he also said to me it's time for the church to start winning the battles that they're fighting we're fighting a lot of battles but it's time to have a win ladies and gentlemen that's why I'm saying we can't keep fighting the same old devil it's time to beat that old devil we can't keep fighting the same addiction it's time to break that addiction we can't keep contending with the same thing over and over again it's time for the body of Christ to step into victory once and for all it's time to win this thing and I saw something in there and, and believe it or not, I'm almost done preaching. <laughs> Sometimes when the pilot's going to land the plane, he'll let you know 20 minutes before he lands. And sometimes he'll let you know 40 minutes before he lands. Huh? <laughs> There's a lot of turbulence in the air. We're just going to go ahead and just lock it down now. Well, I don't know if I'm at 20 or 40, but uh, I'm going to start landing this thing right now. <laughs> what I've learned in my early research of the Revolutionary War is that they could have had victory in 1781. But they got complacent. They got tired. 
there was a lot of legitimate wounds. I'm not diminishing that. And history says they had a posture of war, but there was hardly any fighting. They had their, had their hats on, had their uniforms on, they had their muskets, they knew how to stand, they knew all the protocol, but no one was firing their guns, no cannons were going off, no land was being taken, no victory was being won, and it says that it was actually on both sides. It just went stagnant for about two years, and there was no fighting until ultimately after the battle of Yorktown, something came, and, we, and, 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 and the American continental army the the the, the revolutionaries decided we have to finish the job that's why you can't let revival die because the enemy is like a lion seeking whom he may devour and yes he is a punk and yes he has come against some of us and yes he has done some things to us and yes there are legitimate wounds and there's some legitimate scars in the house but I can't let those things stop me from, from getting what God ultimately has for me he didn't want to just set you kind of free he wants to to set you all the way free he didn't want to just give you a little touch of revival he wanted to set the whole state on fire in Arizona God didn't want to just help us win one election God wanted us to go into revival until the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ we have to win this thing that is the call in the spirit to me that I want to release to you the spirit of God says saints of mine win the war don't just fight but it is time to win the war for I have given you the enemy I have given you the city I have given you the land you got to finish the job because here's what happens if you don't finish the job first Kings 15 God speaks and he tells Saul Verse 3, you go and completely destroy the entire Amalekite nation. He said, completely. Don't you leave one thing left. You destroy that thing completely. That means go win. The word of the Lord, the second part to this word that he gave me, is that in, 24, in 2024, we will not be known by our fight. We will be known by our victory. It's time to win. It's time to win. It's time to break those addictions off of your children and see a win in your house. It's time to break poverty and have a win in your finances. It's time to break sickness and see a win in your health. It's time to break the tyranny and, and, and this... Ooh. The spirit of deceit and thievery that's in this nation. It's time to break it and it's time to see a win in the name of Jesus. And others say, but look at the fall. The Lord says you're looking at the wrong thing. Take your eyes off of the enemy and put your eyes on me. For I am the God whose name is victory. He said completely destroy the Amalekites. But verse 8 says that Saul captured Agag, the Amalekite king, and destroyed everything else. Do you know what? I, I can't, I'm just, I'm just, this is early research. You know what Agag, Agag means? Flame. You want to know, hallelujah, you want to know why there's strange fire in the church? Because we've been doing, we've been dealing with side effects rather than the root cause. Saul went and killed everything but the king. He went after everything but the ruler of that nation. We've been going after symptoms. We've been going after 
TikTok videos. We, we've been going after this, but who is going to declare victory and destroy the evil one and, once and for all? It's time to win this thing. I'm not trying to just get someone's TikTok taken down. I'm trying to see a generation set free by the power of God. It's time to win this. We cannot let strange fire exist amongst us anymore. You got to root it out. You got to clean it out. You got to rebuke it, and it's time to have victory in the name of Jesus. We let things live in this nation that should have been killed a long time ago. Like racism. We should have had that thing done and over with a long time ago. But we dealt with symptoms and we dealt with feelings. But we didn't get to the root cause. We didn't deal with the spirit. We didn't deal with where it came from. And so here we are all these years later still dealing with this thing manifesting. But I'm here to tell you it's time to completely destroy it. It's time for a win, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for a win. It's time to see the dream that God gave. Martin Luther King no longer be a dream but actually become our reality not just here and there but everywhere at all times we need a win over the spirit of racism we need a spirit we need a win over political divisiveness that is in the church we'll be spiritual until every election year and then we divide by this mascot and that mascot and I'm here to tell you neither one of them will bring you victory but behold the land of God we need the lamb and the lion to give us the win <laughs> hallelujah musicians come because I'm done it's time for victory I feel in my spirit to prophesy to the American church that in this season we will not be known by our fight but by our victories we are going to have a revolution. I have made up my mind. I won't stand idly by. I won't just complain. I'll be a reformer. Oh, but what about this and that? I have no fear. I have no fear. Say, but what about this? What about that? Yes, but what about those children? What about, should the Lord tarry, what about your grandchildren? Who's fighting for them? Who's fighting for them? Fresh start, you're so blessed here. You're so blessed. I hope you know how blessed you are. You're so blessed here, but not everyone has. Would you, ask Pastor Abel if Jersey has, if all of Jersey has what you have. Ask, ask Senator, Congressman, Governor, President Tony right there. If, all, if the rest of it, I didn't know what title to call him by today, so I'm just going to call him by all the titles. Ask, ask him if all of Arizona has what you have. So go take it to other places and set Tucson free and Mesa free and Flagstaff free. Go have victory in the name of Jesus. Go middle school by middle school, high school to high school, university to university and have victory in the name of Jesus. I know what God did in Asbury, but let him do it with a secular college in Arizona. In the it's time for a win. It's time to go from revival to revolution. It's time to see what we prophesied become manifest before our very eyes. It's time for a revolution. Hallelujah. Stand with me all over the house. Roanoke, it's time for a revolution. In that state, of firsts first settlement first church first government first Christian television network it's like every time God wants to do something in America he starts it in Virginia and I say let the revolution begin again my the, the 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 group from Jersey come come forward.
when I was when I was with you all I had Cole with me you remember Cole he was the one in the Cowboys jersey during the Giants game yeah you here Man, my sons are revolutionary Cole and I were hanging out we went into New York City and he asked me about the name he started just asking me names why did why do they call it New York why is it New Jersey why is it New Hampshire I said, well, because there was a Hampshire, and then someone came here and started a new Hampshire. He said, what are you talking about? I said, well, over in the motherland, England, in the mother country, there's a Hampshire, and there's a Jersey, and there's a York. But someone came over here and said, we're not just going to keep being York. We're going to be New York. We're not just going to be Jersey. We're going to be New Jersey. We're not just going to be Hampshire. We're going to be New Hampshire. They said we're going to come and do a new thing. And I just feel to speak over this revival contingent that's in front of me. That just like the settlers of that colony declared a new Jersey. I say God does a new thing in your land in the name of Jesus. God does a new thing in the boroughs of New York. God does a new thing in the counties and in the land. God does a new thing from the north, the south, the east, and the west. I say God takes that small state of New Jersey and does a very big thing. And I say you go home as revival makers, revival carriers, I say you go home set on fire by the power of God and I say that out of you God births a new thing a new thing a new thing it won't just be a Puerto Rican thing or a or a Dominican thing or a Colombian thing or a black thing or a white thing it'll be a new thing where all people come together under the banner of the name of Jesus I say God will do a new thing in New Jersey and God will use you for his glory and I say, Father, set him on fire right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. Father, give this man fresh vision and fresh wisdom for the new thing that you're about to do. Father, give her new dreams, new ingenuity, new plans and new strategies for the thing that you're about to do. For they're going home to a revolution. They're going home to a revolution. Father, you set this nation free by strategic battles that were won on a land called New Jersey. And I say that you'll set the nation free by more strategic battles that will be won in New Jersey again. Fire come upon you. Fire come upon you. I say it starts in the East Coast again. Father, I say let it happen in Virginia again. Massachusetts again. Philadelphia again. Let there be a revival in Pennsylvania again. I say let there be a revolution again. Let there be a revival that provokes a spirit of revolution that declares once and for all we will not sit by we will not we will not accept what's taking place we will revolt and we will win the battle once and for all someone shout in arizona i don't i don't know a lot about the history of arizona I'm sure you do, and I'm going to do better learning. But you know, one of the things about getting older, and if my mom's watching, I'm not talking about me and you. I got to see her at Christmas, she'll put me in my place. But one thing I've learned about getting older is that at some point, roles kind of change. And parents that used to take care of their children now have children that ought to honor their mother and their father and take care of them. I watched my mother do it with my grandmother. I watched my father do it with his parents that lived on another continent. He honored his mother and his father by taking care of them as best as he could. I watched my mother do that. And I, I know my mom is strong. Okay, she's watching. I know we're about 50 years away from me having to take care of you. But there comes a point where there's a role reversal. And what birthed what, what gave birth to a child 
now has a child to take care of them. That revolutionary war of the East Coast birthed a nation. And at some point along the way, Arizona came into this great union that we call the United States. But the role has kind of changed a little bit. And New Jersey had to come to Arizona. Tennessee had to come to Arizona. The states, all 50 states have had to come to this desert to be revived by the river that God has given you. And I'm asking you, Arizona, help us win this battle once and for all. We need you. We need you. God has anointed you. God has mantled you to carry us over the finish line and see this victory once and for all. So I'm asking you, I don't know which way is north, south, east, and west, but would some of you stretch your hands that way, that way, that way, and this way, and just start interceding and declare a revolution and declare a victory for this nation once and for all. Once and for all, we say victory victory not shall be but victory is mine in the name of Jesus as far back as I can remember I heard this nation this nation waging war on drugs and chemicals and substances that were abused we had in the 80s Nancy Reagan you remember the war on drugs but we've never been able to declare total victory over that war on drugs and now people have laid down the guard and they say just accept it have you been to New York lately it smells like pot. It doesn't matter what borough you're in. doesn't matter what swanky hotel, restaurant you're in. From the cheapest diner to the swankiest restaurant in New York, it smells like pot everywhere you go because someone gave up the fight. But I think there's some people in here that lost years to drugs, that lost family members to drug addiction. There's some former police officers and DEA agents, and you have fellow comrades that lost their lives along the way fighting. They this war against drugs and I I don't know I just felt it while they were singing I'm not gonna let the I'm not just gonna say the war is over and you just do whatever you want to do I say no in the name of Jesus it's time to have victory 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 over drug addiction victory over alcoholism victory over addiction in the name of Jesus I break the bondage of marijuana I break the bondage of cocaine I break the bondage of methamphetamine and prescription drugs I break it off of you in the mighty name of Jesus and I say victory is yours in the name of Jesus praying for people but if you've never been baptized or you feel to be rebaptized tonight when I count to three I want you to start making your way to those doors this is what I know that happens in the waters of baptism 
I know that salvation comes to souls, but I'm telling you, God breaks chains in the waters of baptism. Hallelujah. I remember, I remember, I just, I've heard it so much. I've probably told the story here. I remember people telling my dad, well, I need to change some things and then I'll get baptized. And my dad would say, if you could change it on your own, you would have already done it. You need God. So I'm encouraging you to take that pack of cigarettes to the baptistry. Take that vape. Take that pipe. Take that addiction. Take that bad attitude. Take that rebellion. Take that evil thought. You take it to the waters of baptism and let it be buried in the name of Jesus. And when you come out of the water, you're coming out a new creature. You're going to be set free. I'm telling you, tonight is the night when God makes it right. Tonight is the night when chains are broken. Tonight is the night of victory. Say it the spirit. Spirit of God. So if you're here to be baptized at the count of three, start making your way. One, two, three. I'm releasing you now. I'm releasing you now. Are you going to, hallelujah, go get your new thing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jersey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While they're going, whatever victory you need, while they're going, whatever victory you need, I don't know your fight, but I know your God. If you're here tonight, ready for victory once and for all then when i count to three i want you to come to this altar i have no clue what god's about to do but i think it's about to get wild up in here hallelujah i wore tennis shoes to church tonight because i'm expecting for it to get wild up in the house of god there's victory in the camp there's victory in the house hallelujah 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 Hallelujah. There's someone watching. I just felt you. You just, you drew on my anointing. You just drew, you drew my spirit to you. Someone watching that's saying, yeah, that's that fresh start. But what about me? You don't know my little church. You don't know my battles. You don't know what money we need next month to just make payroll and pay the mortgage. I hear you. I hear you in the spirit. Hallelujah. I'm going to jump from war to war. Because earlier this year, God had me studying, studying World War II. And I found out that there was these soldiers, their only assignment, it was to go from battlefield to battlefield to speak victory. Because each battlefield didn't know what was happening on the other battlefield. They didn't have today's technology. So all they knew was right in front of them. And so there was these messengers, if you will, these messengers of victory. And it was their job to walk into a battlefield and say, hey, I don't know what you lost last night, but I got good news. We're winning the war. I don't know what happened in this battle, but we're winning the war. And then come over here and say, hey, listen, I don't know what y'all went through last night, but we're winning the war. And they would go from country to country, region to region, just letting the, just letting the soldiers know we're winning the war. I need someone in Virginia to know we're winning the war I need someone in Tennessee to know we're winning the war I need someone in California to know we're winning the war the devil doesn't have the upper hand the devil's not winning we're winning the war victory is ours victory is ours revival's not coming revival's here this season these are the days that were spoken of by the prophet Joel revival is here and victory is ours So if you need victory tonight, victory over anything at the count of three, come and come ready to walk out with victory. One, two, three. Come on, I'm going to release one prayer over you and then I'm going to start laying hands. Hallelujah, I feel it. I feel it. I don't want to tarry too much longer. I don't want to, I don't want to diminish it. I, 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 I don't want to delay it. I don't want to delay it. It's getting ready. Someone at home, get ready. Get ready, get ready. Victory is about to come to your house. Father, I release this word over this house. And may it not just be the words of a sermon, the words of a prophecy, but it let, it be, let it become their manifest reality. Victory is yours. Healing is yours. Prosperity is yours. Deliverance is yours. Victory is yours. Victory, victory, victory in the name of Jesus. Get it!
God arise and his enemies scatter. Victory is the Lord. Say, let God arise and his enemies scatter. Oh. God arise and his enemies let scatter. God arise. God arise and his enemies scatter. I'm not going to make everyone sing it, but just hold that chord for a minute, brother piano player. There's an old song 
that Dorothy Norwood used to sing in it simply says, somebody prayed for me. They had me on their mind. They took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. And when I looked upon you, I saw that you're the manifestation of a praying person in your past. Prayer got you to where you are. Prayer is going to sustain what God has done in your life. And prayer is what's going to bring the other generation, the next generation through to the same blessing that you have. And I prophesy to you that someone else is going to sing in the next coming years. That lady prayed for me. She had me on her mind. She took the time and prayed for me. And your very eyes are going to see that person in an altar coming to the fate of Jesus. And I'm just here to tell you that your prayers have not been in vain. For the same prayers that brought you through are the same prayers that are going to bring you through to see the miracle that you've been believing for. So rest in the Lord, for the Lord will answer your weary prayer. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Hallelujah. 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 Hateba shekombre sede bande sihabahai. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He's going to make you a happy woman. I'm telling you, you're going to see some prayers no longer be a request, but they're going to be answered. And rather than give a prayer request, you're going to give a praise testimony. Hallelujah. And someone's going to say, I'm so glad she prayed. I'm so glad she prayed. Thank you for not giving up on me. Someone's going to say, hallelujah. 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 If you've been believing, I know, I know Pastor Kim called it for it earlier, but I just felt another wave of it. If you're believing for a loved one, a friend, I don't know who it is, but you're just believing. Hallelujah. It's time for victory to come. I just, would you... You already said that name. You already prayed about it. Now let's decree that it is done. It's done. That family member is saved in the name of Jesus. That that it is start whatever it is. Just start calling it out. I mean, don't don't embarrass anyone, but just start declaring victory all over the house. That situation in your house where you've needed a breakthrough, say it's done in the name of Jesus. That healing that you've been believing the Lord for, start declaring it's done in the name. Start calling it forth as though it's already done, and say victory, victory, victory. Then start speaking victory over it. Victory over your finances. Victory, victory over your house victory over your marriage victory over that cousin that aunt that uncle victory over that child that daughter that marriage that mother that father that grandchild that grandparent victory shout victory shout victory
I speak healing over you. In the name of the Lord. Healing over Pastor Paul's father. In the name of the Lord. Father, what you did for Alex Flores in El Paso, do it for our elder tonight in the name of Jesus. Hey, leg, wake up in the name of Jesus. Victory, 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 victory. If you haven't already made your way to the waters of baptism and God's calling you, you can still go. They're waiting for you. They didn't run out of water. Hallelujah. 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 Because we're in victory. Let me close with this and then I'll give it to Pastor. Because we're in victory. Because we're on the winning side. Just hear my, my admonition. Stop talking about the losing side. Stop talking about the enemy all the time. I shouldn't use a sports analogy, but do you think the Phoenix Suns sit around their locker room thinking about the Chicago Bulls with their four wins? How foolish would it be to be thinking about things that you can beat? Talking about defeated foes. How foolish. Think of how foolish it would be to get all in an uproar over last year's Super Bowl. And you think, and, and, and that sounds funny, but the enemy has been a defeated foe since Calvary. And we're still talking as if he might have a shot to win. Why are you talking about the losing side? Our name is victory because our God is victory. Take your focus off of the devil and put it on Jesus and declare victory is yours in the name of Jesus. It's time for a revolution. Believe it.
This is what victory looks like. This is what victory sounds like. This is what victory sounds like. Satan, you are a defeated foe. We take our eyes off of you. And we look up in victory at the risen Savior. This is what revival sounds like. Just shout out one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Victory is ours, yes? Thank you, Tony, for sharing that word with us tonight. Can we let evangelist Tony Suarez... What an amazing weekend, yes? Friday night, Pray America. Last night, Pastor Kim. And today, God has been good to us, yes? And thank God for all the folks that got water baptized, yes? We congratulate all of them. Hard to believe that this is the last Doorkeepers of Revival weekend of this year. It's been an amazing year. But the year ahead, I have not seen, ear hath not heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of men what God has in store for us. Thank you for his goodness. Thank Him for His blessings. Thank Him for the outpouring of His Holy Spirit. Thank Him for His mercy, His grace. Thank Him for His discipline. This call to repentance. It's been an amazing year. I want to say thank you to all those that have labored, not just this weekend, but all year long. Thank you so much for serving this house on Doorkeepers of Revival Weekend. Thank you. Those that serve in the parking lot, those that minister to our babies, and those that minister to our children, raising revivalists. Thank Invade for carrying the passion and the fire for what God is doing in this place. I want to thank my wife for what she carries and brings prophetically to this house week after week after week. I want to thank this amazing praise team and band. We love all of you. Thank you for not letting us settle, but pulling us and pushing us. God, is, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so special what God has done but I'm telling you what's ahead of us church 
What's ahead of us? You say, tell us. I don't know. I just know it's going to be more. Just get real corny. We'll just say more in 24. That's like, you know, churches all over America, 2024, more. It's going to, you know, anyway. Here's what we need you to do. We need you to go out this week and touch the world. Take the revival that, that has been burning in our hearts this weekend and touch somebody's life with it. Go touch somebody. Go be a revolutionary. Begin in your world. If we, if we will all do something in the world that God has put us in, then this world will be touched and changed by the power of God. Yes. So just go be you full of the Holy Ghost and touch somebody's life this week. And we're going to be back here. We're going to be back here Wednesday night for Gap, right? It's going to be awesome. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful evening. We'll see you back here Wednesday night.